hey there. Um, we are going to get the poop today on the biliary excretion of drugs. Yahoo! Now, I really kind of feel badly that I didn't <coughs> spend more time on this uh, in 362 because biliary excretion is a pretty important way to eliminate drugs. Um, drug, when a drug is, is introduced to the body, it can be oxidated by the cytochrome P450 or the phase one type of meta metabolism to make a metabolite that then is usually more polar that can be eliminated in the urine through the kidneys, right? Or it can also go undergo a phase two type uh, metabolism, which usually is some kind of conjugation like eucuronidation or something that makes another metabolite um, that often is too large to be eliminated in the kidneys. It may be if it's, if it's uh, polar enough and small enough can be eliminated in the urine. But if it's not, or if it's nonpolar, it may undergo uh, active transport to be eliminated via the bile into the biliary system and then dumped back into the intestine and eliminated uh, through the feces. So we're going to talk about this part, you know, we've talked a lot about renal clearance, but now we're going to talk about biliary clearance. What kinds of drugs are cleared by the, by the by, through the bile, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is just a little picture showing kind of a chunk of the liver, and what happens is that the bile system is actually integrated into the liver, and the bile flow will come, will take drug from the liver that is another form of elimination into the bile duct and then it can be stored here in the gallbladder so all the green here is the bile system and then it can go into the common biliary duct and then dumped into there's a little spigot here where it gets spit into the duodenal uh, the duodenum in the small intestine um, then it can undergo reabsorption and go through the whole thing again. That's called enteropathic recirculation. If it's large enough, it's going to follow through the, the small intestine into the large intestine and be eliminated in the feces. Another picture of the liver. You can see here, this is the inferior vena cava that's, that's um, pulling uh, used uh, blood from the liver the aorta feeding it, and you can see here the, the red is the hepatic artery, the blue is the portal vein, and the green is the bile system. So the right hepatic duct, the left hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, and then this goes into the gallbladder, which is a storage area for bile, and the drugs that are eliminated in the bile, the common bile duct, which heads out to the duodenum. Okay, so what is going to determine the clearance, whether or not a drug will be cleared by the bile? First, polarity. The more polar it is, the more likely it's going to be uh, cleared by the bile, but that it can also have a lipophilic portion and still be cleared by the biliary system. So it's sort of, this is all sort of opposite of... Uh, um, uh, passive transport through uh, membranes. You want it more polar. It is usually quite large, so it has to have a molecular weight. The, the larger it is, the more likely it will be removed by uh, the biliary system. So if it has a molecular weight less than 300, it's unlikely to be removed by the bile. But if it's more than 300, the larger it is from 300 and up, on up, the more likely it will be removed by the bile. There's also active transport sites that we'll talk about that line the bile duct that will actively transport drug into the bile from the plasma or from the liver. Okay, so polarity, we already talked about the more polar it is, the more likely it is going to be removed uh, through the biliary system. But it can have both polar and lipophilic groups. Molecular size. I think I already mentioned the larger, the more likely. So a molecular weight of 300 grams per mole or more is what we're looking at here. And the larger the molecular weight gets, the more likely that it will be excreted in the bile. Um, 
the higher the molecular weight and the stronger the polar group, the more likely it'll be removed. And also for metabolites, if they're conjugated, undergo that, that phase two type metabolism, especially if they undergo glucuronidation with glucuronic acid being added to the drug, this adds 200 molecular weight right there, 200 grams per mole right there. So it's likely that if it has this big group put on that it's going to have to be removed by the bile because it'll be too large to be removed in the urine. So we talked about polarity, we talked about molecular size, and we know that there are active transport groups that line the, uh, the um, the bile duct. So here this is another like picture of the liver. This is hepatocytes. And you can see here that we have uh, bile flowing this way into the common bile duct and out. So the, these are hepatocytes and there's bile coming through here. And you'll see in another picture that we have actually active transport sites that live right on the surface here that are going to be dumping uh, actively transporting drug into this bile to be eliminated this way from the body. This shows um, also the uh, central vein, hepatic vein, and hepatic artery here so you can see all the other systems that feed these hepatocytes. As you can see we have bile flow here. These are hepatocytes and these are where those active transport sites will be and the bile will dump that into the bile duct. You can also see here that the blood flow is a countercurrent flow. So you've got blood on this end of the hepatocyte and um, bile on this side of the hepatocyte. Okay, so again, here's the hepatocyte, plasma on this side, bile on this side, and these are the active transport sites moving drug from the hepatocyte into the bile duct. Um, so you've got uh, bile salt, exocrine pump, I think it's called, BSEP, uh, MRP2, MDR3. These should be familiar to you. And of course, our good old friend Peak Like a Protein, which is the first exocrine pump we learned about. So all of these pumps will move drug from the hepatocyte into the bile itself. These are transporters to, into and out of the hepatocyte from the plasma. So here are some active transport sites that I'd like you to know about. First of all, a good old friend peak like a protein which mostly moves cationic compounds and it can be upregulated by insulin, carcinogens, and anti-tumor agents. The multi-drug resistance associated protein 2 and class 3 are usually mediating anionic compounds and can be upregulated by glucocorticoids phenobarbital, cisplatin, and ultipraz, among other things probably. Those are the ones that we know about. And then here's your bile salt export pump, uh, the BSEP that I showed you on the other picture, and this transports, surprisingly, biliary acids and some anti-cancer drugs and will be upregulated by glucocorticoids. This is just another picture of, this is the bile, and compounds that will, um, here's your bile salt exocrine pump. These are things that will stop it, inhibit it. So cyclosporin, glabenclamide, rifamycin, rifampicin, losantrin, flutamide, and uh, the thiolid is diodine, diodine derivatives. I can't say that right at the moment. You can see there's, this is a very complex system things that can upregulate and downregulate these transport systems. And we're really just learning about a lot of this. So we'll learn more as you guys become uh, in your careers about the active transport in the biliary system. All of these drugs uh, or their metabolites are excreted in the bile is an important um, method of elimination. So cefamandol, which is an antibiotic, cefaparazone, chloramphenicol, um, all antibiotics, diazepam, which is a um, anti-seizure drug, as well as a um, sedative, digoxin is a heart drug, as you know, 
Well, you guys know all these. What am I saying? I'm thinking I'm talking to P4s. I've been teaching them for a little bit here. Doxorubicin, doxycycline, estradiol. I don't need to read all these to you. The statins you can see. These three drugs undergo enteropatic circulation, um, which we'll talk about in just a moment. What will induce biliary secretion? Well, phenobarbital induces biliary secretion because it inc increases glucuronidation. So remember, it's an enzyme inducer. It also induces gl glucuronidation and increases bioflow. Any drug or disease states that enhances bioflow will increase the biliary clearance of drugs. Anything that decreases the biliary clearance would be anything that decreases bioflow or causes cholestasis. You'll see a decrease in bile in the clearance of the drug. There's three different classes of agents, and what it depends upon is the bile to plasma ratio. Obviously, if the bile to plasma ratio is one, that means that they're about equivalent. And examples of this are the electrolytes, sodium, potassium chloride, and glucose. If it's greater than one, so between 10 and 1,000, then they're more highly concentrated in the bile than the plasma. As you might, as you might expect, that includes bile acids and bilirubin and the glucocorticoids. These drugs are considered colophiles because they have, they accumulate in the bile over the plasma. Finally, anything that is in higher concentration in the plasma than in the bile would be a class C agent, and that's most drugs, cholesterol, phospholipids, sucrose, and albumin. So any drug or agent should be able to fit in one of these three. Equal bioplasma concentrations, less than and greater than, and these are the colophiles. We can calculate biliary clearance if we know that bile to plasma concentration ratio, which is the same thing we just looked at, right? And we know the bile flow, which is normally about one half to 0.8 mils per minute. So how does that compare to liver, liver blood flow? Liver blood flow is much higher, isn't it? It's liver blood flows what? one and a half liters per minute, so much slower.